Hola, eh, un placer compartir eh, el día de hoy después de que la semana pasada fuera el Día de la Filosofía y hoy continuando con eh, la programación de Atrévete a pensar cuestiones filosóficas para exploradores modernos. Hoy tenemos el, el libro de filosofía para exploradores polares, además de modernos, de Arlen Kake, que nos acompaña pues, para bueno, introducirnos a lo que es en realidad casi su vida, porque este libro tiene algo de, de compilación de experiencias a lo largo de toda su biografía. Es un libro que tiene algo de conclusión, de, de, casi, tiene un espíritu casi zen, diría, en algún momento, ¿no? Es un libro imposible de escribir a los 30 años, por ejemplo. Es algo, un lugar al que se ha llegado después de un recorrido biográfico muy intenso. Eh, ¿Por qué el libro ahora decides escribir este libro? Podías haber esperado igual unos cuantos años más, ¿no? Pero ese punto de conclusión que tiene el libro, de final de algo, ¿por qué lo decides escribir ahora? Um, I felt I had something really important uh, in my heart that I wanted to uh, write about. And I think it's important because today um, we are separating ourselves from uh, nature. We start to believe more and more in exploring the world by looking into a screen and uh, sitting in a chair. And I think that's a huge misunderstanding. So I wanted to write a book to remind all the readers about that we are, we're all born explorers we're born to wonder we're born to be curious and it's correct as it was said i could not have written this book 10 or 20 or 30 years ago i needed the experiences from nature i needed experiences from the urban life i needed experiences as a publisher to write my own version about how we all can reach our own salt poles. Mm -hmm. En un momento del libro comentas que a Gary Kasparov, cuando es campeón del mundo, viene la viuda de otro campeón, también de ajedrez, y básicamente le compadece por haber llegado al día más feliz de su vida tan temprano. Tú eh, has eh, recorrido, has sido la primera persona que ha llegado a los tres polos eh, de la Tierra eh, considerando al Everest como uno de los polos a pie, de los que han llegado a pie. Eh, no sé si es comparable, por supuesto, cada uno tiene su recorrido, ¿no? Pero ¿cuál de los éxitos ha sido el que te dejó más vacío al principio? El que quizá te hizo pensar en cómo te sentirías después eh, al conseguir otras, otras cimas, otros éxitos. Uh -huh. I think for me, um, the most important expedition was to walk alone in total solitude, no radio contact, um, to the South Pole, because I was in total isolation for 50 days and nights under the midnight sun. And that taught me a great lesson on silence and the importance of silence. And of course, of all the silence surrounding me, but also the silence within, um, which I think it's very easy to forget today because we are always connected, we're always available, we always uh, have our phone in, uh, in our hands or at least close by. And all this is about noise. All this is about living through other people while silence, this inner silence, is about exploring yourself and, and uh, to walk to the South Pole um, taught me a great lesson um, on that. El silencio y la soledad son dos constantes en el libro, pero es verdad que siempre lo pillas desde un lado muy um, imaginativo, intentas darle la vuelta y eso parte de una infancia en la que cuentas que bueno, eh, tú tenías dislexia y una fuerte falta de concentración. El libro también introduce un poco a cómo hacer una ventaja de tus desventajas y en eso parece que tú eres una especie de, bueno, de guía, ¿no? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's, um, I think it's important to have uh, uh, great difficulties in life. Um, I'm saying this, you know, not in the sense that um, all kinds of involuntarily difficulties, um, uh, but I think as a Norwegian, I think it's important to uh, quite often choose the most difficult paths in life. And, uh, and um, I don't want to rom rom be romantic about uh, hardship, but of course, if your childhood is too easy, um, too simple, um, it's, I think it's hard to live a rich life later. So, so um, somehow I think the difficulties I had in my life, like not being able to read or speak properly. I couldn't even pronounce my name before I was 10 or 11 years old. Um, has, you know, been a great inspiration. Eh, has dicho que como noruego, pero como noruego, en realidad, vuestra media de felicidad es muy alta, ¿no? Dices en el libro que, eh, bueno, mucha de la gente de los noruegos consultados, y, pero también personas que han vivido en circunstancias como muy difíciles, hablas de unos campesinos ugandeses, por ejemplo, o de una mujer que te encuentras que está viviendo en, 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 en un puente, creo que es, no recuerdo si es una mujer o, o un hombre, pero cuando a ellos se les pregunta por la felicidad, eh, dicen que su media más o menos está entre un 7 y un 8, considerando del 1 al 10. Eh, sé que es una pregunta un poco difícil, pero como tú la utilizas dentro del libro para valorar la felicidad tanto de los noruegos como de otras personas, ¿cuál sería tu media, tu nivel de felicidad, eh, digamos, actual o tu nivel de felicidad a lo largo de toda tu vida media? You know, average is the same, I think, as most people in the world, around seven, a little bit more than, uh, than, than, than seven. But I have to add that I think the you know, whole idea that we should be happy all the time, I think it's a big misunderstanding. I don't think life is about the pursuit of uh, happiness. I think you just have to accept that life is, uh, is uh, difficult. And many of these difficulties in life is giving life uh, meaning. And as I said, um, uh, you know, you don't have to climb Mount Everest. You don't have to go to the office. You don't have to go to school. You don't have even have to make yourself dinner. Uh, so all this is about uh, uh, making life a little bit more difficult. And uh, so I think it's, you know, it's much more important to find meanings in life, not only one meaning, but many meanings in life. And then maybe happiness will come to you. But uh, this whole idea, both in Spain and in Norway, that we should be happy all the time. Um, I don't like that. I don't believe in, um, I don't believe in possibility, mm -hmm. possibility to be happy, uh, you know, every day. Eh, una de tus experiencias eh, personales, así como que, que te marcan, es cuando estás eh, enamorado de una chica o crees que estar enamorado y recorres 150 kilómetros para visitarla. Y entonces de repente cuando estás ya allí prácticamente eh, tocándola, descubres que igual no la querías ver tanto como pensabas. Y esa sorpresa te hace pensar mucho. Ese tipo de sorpresas conforme pasan los años, ¿continúas teniéndolas? Eh, o sea, ¿deseos que crees tener que de repente resulta que no? ¿O ahora los deseos ya que tienes sí que está muy claro que son deseos mm, de verdad? Um, I, I see it all the time, is that we kind of getting close to achieving something. And it, almost there we give up um so i see it with the other norwegians i have experienced it myself and um, that's why i put this anecdote in there because uh, i was dreaming about this girl i was 15 years old i was super much in love um i felt but when i was just about being able to get her uh then i lost interest And um, I think, you know, we humans are like this, but I think it's important to be 
aware of it because um, in my case, it was a misunderstanding. Of course, I should get into the house and hug my, hug my girl. So, uh, but the, you know, we are, you know, I think sometimes we humans, we are afraid of our own greatness. Eh, hablando de grandeza y volviendo al Everest, eh, comentas que durante la ascensión evitaste mirar abajo. ¿Qué es lo en algunos momentos en los que pensabas eso que mirar abajo podía ser más, o sea, más peligroso que continuar mirando hacia arriba? ¿no? Eh, ¿Hacia dónde evitas mirar ahora? No hablo solo de cuando escalas. What what I don't what I try not to look at. Uh, you know, like uh, when I climbed Everest, um, uh, I've always been scared about heights to look down from tall buildings uh, or from cliffs in the mountains. So, but I still wanted to climb Mount Everest. So I just decided when I climbed the mountain that. I hardly ever looked down at all. I only just looked uh, down to my feet and uh, up towards the top of, of the mountain. And um, I'm telling this story in the book because I think it's like, you know, we all have these struggles and, and, uh, and somehow you have to relate to them and sometimes, you know, try to solve them. So, uh, so um, I got to the summit. I, uh, But um, it's uh, when you're on the top of Mount Everest, first, of course, you're very, you know, uh, satisfied. But soon after, you start to think about how in hell you should get down again. En, en el libro eh, es a partir de alguien que, bueno, dentro de lo que cabe has conseguido muchas metas que pretendías, de alguien para la sociedad que puede verse como exitoso, pero tú insistes mucho en subrayar el valor de la renuncia. Eh, por ejemplo, el, el caso este del soldado sueco Nils Ekholm, que él renuncia a ir a la expedición eh, en, globo, en el globo El Águila, porque, por ejemplo, está recién casado y está pensando más en las la pérdida y en el dolor que puede causar que no en el éxito que reportaría pues, el, el viajar allí. ¿no? En, entre, ¿Qué renuncias? Ahora, hablabas al principio de naturaleza y ahora se nos está pidiendo renunciar a ciertos lugares de comodidad que hemos alcanzado, ¿no? a ciertos espacios eh, de progreso. Eh, supongo que la idea de, de renuncia, eh, tú estarás trabajando muy a fondo con ella, no sé hasta qué punto también, eh, siendo partícipe con tu discurso de medioambiental, con el que empezabas ahora esta entrevista, por ejemplo, hasta qué punto estás intentando también comunicar la idea de renuncia a la sociedad, intentando concienciarla de que igual hay que dar un paso no quedarse en el sitio, sino incluso dar un paso atrás ¿no? en la sociedad actual. Um, I, I, um, I believe, in general, in life, I believe tomorrow will be uh, better than yesterday. I, I, I uh, very much enjoy to be in my house today when it's warm. I'm going to have dinner later, maybe a glass of wine. So I very much enjoy this, uh, this uh, comfort. That you can have in 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 Norway and in Spain, uh, but I think you know. I think it's sometimes it's it's important to not live this exactly the same life every day. So sometimes I think it's great to go into nature, and live a simple life, live a different life. It be in touch with uh, the trees, the the rain that's falling, the smells, seeing the birds. You move, you walk, you move, you're being moved at the same time and have all these kind of simple pleasures, also pleasures that are almost uh, for free. And, uh, and Mother Earth is almost five billion years old. So to me, it's very naive that we're not listening to Mother Earth. And I also think it's important to keep in mind that the most important things in life things in life 
they don't have any lasting forms. So of course you can be very happy for, you know, you buy your girlfriend, your wife, uh, some beautiful red shoes and she will be happy uh, for a few hours. Uh, but if you have a great experience in the mountains or in the forest or in the beaches in Southern Spain or whatever, uh, that kind of gives life so much more uh, richness. So I believe in not all the time, but quite often, um, keep your pleasures at a very simple level. Uh, I didn't come up with this idea. This, is, this idea is thousands of years old. And I think every advice or every wisdom that had lasted for more than 1,000 years, um, we should take uh, uh, serious. So keep your, sim keep your pleasures simple. That's a very good advice. Eh, Noruega, eh, y tú como noruego has repetido varias veces ¿no? la, la, la importancia de, del país, incluso en tu imaginario. Ahora, para el resto del mundo, creo que también es uno de los países un poco referencia en cuanto que tiene que lidiar con la cuestión de tener como grandes yacimientos, eh, digamos, minerales y, y extraerlos, lo cual le produce una gran riqueza y a la misma vez tener un entorno natural también privilegiado que eh, la sociedad quiere proteger. Tú como miembro de, integrante de esa sociedad y como alguien además que ha disfrutado de, de, tanto de unas cosas como de las otras, pudiendo viajar a todo, por todo el mundo con los medios de, de comunicación y a la misma vez disfrutar de, de las gran, los grandes espacios desiertos y vírgenes, eh, ¿cómo, ¿cómo llevas tú y cómo crees que lleva también la propia sociedad noruega esa contradicción con la que va a tener que, que lidiar ahora en los próximos años de una manera quizá urgente? I think that's a very good question, and, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, um, you know, some questions simply don't have a great answer. So I think this is uh, this is something that uh, is troubling. Uh, a question which is troubling Norwegians. Um, so you know, but as I said, I I am optimistic and. Um, I don't share all this pessimism in the world today that uh, that the world will go under and it will be a total catastrophe in 10 years. I'm optimistic. I think we will find solutions to the major problems, also climate change in the world. Um, but still, of course, it's a, it's a big paradox that um, Norway is a huge uh, producer of oil and that we keep the money, uh, the proceeds of ourselves. I mean, it's, uh, um, that's how it is, but it's nothing to be proud of. Mm -hmm. um, sobre las obsesiones al viajar, cambiamos un poquito de, de tercio. Eh, hablas de, por ejemplo, Amundsen, cómo elige sus botas, cuánto se esfuerza en elegir sus botas. ¿Cuáles son tus eh, o cuáles han sido tus obsesiones más eh, que mejor crees que te pueden ayudar a, def a, defin a definirte a la hora del viaje, primero? Y luego te preguntaré a la hora de escribir. Sí, pero para mí... Tengo todo tipo de deseos. Estoy muy motivado por... Uh, curiosity. I'm just super curious about things. I get up in the morning and wondering what's happening in the world. I'm trying to read uh, philosophy, art history. I read about uh, uh, politics, uh, psychology, uh, lots of culture. Um, so I think very, life is very much about, you know, fulfilling your own uh, potentials. And um, then sometimes I feel I have something important to write about. Um, and then I, you know, I once wrote a book on silence because I understood that my three teenage daughters, they didn't know what silence is. So they said that silence is uh, nothing. And um, of course they're wrong. I think, um, so I wrote about silence and then I wrote about walking 
and of this time on uh, philosophy for polar explorers. So I hardly do anything because or travel somewhere because I'm going to write about it. But then, you know, I love writing, but I only write when I um, feel I have something important uh, important to say. En el libro dices que para ti escribir es, después de haber estado recorriendo un camino, de haber estado realizando una acción, de repente necesitas detenerte, un poco lo que decías ahora, ¿no? ¿De qué camino te has detenido? Y después de filosofía para exploradores polares, ¿qué camino has emprendido? ¿En, en medio de qué dos caminos está este libro? Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking about what to write next. Um, but lately I have been uh, busy working. I, I, I work also as a publisher. I started a book publishing uh, company 25 years ago and uh, it has been growing and it has become uh, very big by Norwegian standards. So I'm now about uh, selling my company because um, it takes much too much time, it takes too much energy. So um, I hope soon to be able to sit down and, uh, and, and write again. But lately I have been uh, working uh, super hard, like many people, getting up in the morning, getting to you know, be in the office all day. And uh, of course, still been spending time in nature, but uh, I haven't had time to, 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 to write. And, uh, but I really hope uh, to write more books. Um, because um, writing is super difficult, but it's also very, very satisfying when you're able to, uh, um, uh, you know, to, to write something people find interesting. I think that's one of the uh, greatest things you can uh, experience. So, um, so um, it's a huge privilege to, 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 to write books. De hecho, mucha, vemos ahora la librería que tienes eh, detrás de ti, vemos referencias a escritores de auténtica vanguardia como David Foster Wallace dentro de, tus, de tu libro, eh, aludes a, además de a muchos exploradores, también a escritores, a filósofos, eh, a gente que, que lleva siempre contigo. ¿Tú cuando viajas es algo...? Um, ¿Los libros te, eh, son una compañía habitual? Porque un viajero tiene que ir ligero ah. más bien, ¿no? Las lecturas, ¿cuándo las acostumbras a hacer o, o cómo, cómo lees o lees mientras estás viajando o no? In general, I'm always reading. Uh, but of course, when you walk to the North Pole or the South Pole, you can't bring much literature. No. So, uh, to the North Pole, I was too tired, too cold, too exhausted to, to read anything. To the South Pole, I was reading a little bit every evening, uh, very light books. So I said I tried to have as many ideas per gram as uh, possible. Um, and then I recirculated some of the books. My plan was to recirculate some of the books as uh, toilet paper. I, uh, to the South Pole, I, I brought uh, four or five books, uh, super light books, and, and because I was dragging everything I needed, uh, all food, all gasoline, all gear uh, on a sled. And because I need to say, wait, I, I uh, had as many ideas per gram as possible with the books. And then I also had a plan that I could re uh, recirculate the books as toilet paper. Muy bien. Las notas, escribir entonces, como como escribir, escribirás poco, era todo de memoria, ¿no? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote a diary um, when, I, when I walked there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wrote a diary and I read like four or five books just to get some input into my head. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But I have to add, like, a beautiful thing with being in nature is that after a few days, you start to communicate with the environment, to sending some ideas out into the uh, into the nature, and you get all the thoughts back again. So uh, life in nature, if it's uh, if it's in the mountains in Spain or 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 or, or uh, close to the ocean or whatever, um, is super super enriching. Enriquecedor que algunos se toman como algo también desafiante. Y al final del libro subrayas la importancia de quizá huir de lo que es el dilema del explorador, que es esa épica de terminar la aventura de una manera trágica, ¿no? que es algo con lo que hemos crecido, creo, en, en la sociedad casi occidental. ¿no? Eh, recuerdo algunos libros que precisamente han hecho fortuna eh, escribiendo sobre escaladores que acaban muriendo. Y ese es el gran kit de, de la historia que nos cuentan. ¿no? Eh, tú como, claro, supongo que el, el amor por la vida es lo que te ha hecho básicamente saber seleccionar muy bien tus desafíos, ¿no? Well, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, um... Uh, low life is uh, is uh, a little bit difficult when you are away all the time. Uh, somehow, I think um, I think you know the girls uh, um, be a bit. You know they kind of uh, you know they they love an explorer. It could be you know sometimes love an explorer because it's an explorer. But then you know eventually the girl will also leave you because you are an explorer because you're never home. So uh, it is uh, love life is always difficult. Um, but um, you know um, I have three kids and I'm uh, very happy for that. Um, And I think you asked something about uh, people dying on expeditions. Um, I have to say, I have always been very good with my uh, preparations. So I've always been working really hard systematically before every expedition uh, because safety uh, is super important. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to die. I want to live on. And... Um, I think the reason I have been successful um, is because I have been uh, well prepared and I have not been overestimating my own possibilities. Mm -hmm. Y luego también hablas, bueno, de la, de la importancia eh, en un momento de tu vida, ahora lo estabas comentando en una pregunta anterior, de tener hijos, de lo que tú llamas el cuarto polo que tú has conquistado, que quizá haya sido el que más te ha transformado, ¿es así? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, I think it's, uh, I have to say, it's uh, much more difficult to, 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 to live with three the teenage daughters uh, in the house than walking to the South Pole. It's uh, much more challenging because walking to the South Pole lasts for 50 days. And, you know, it's, as I said, you know, it's, uh, I just love skiing and I love being in nature. And I don't mind being alone, although I'm a very social guy. Uh, but, you know, when you have three teenage daughters in your house, like, you know, part of the time, they're almost like they are insane. Uh, so I have to say to, to try to be a good father is a bigger challenge than walking to the South Pole. Habrá un quinto polo? I really hope so. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, I think uh, as I maybe I said, you know, we are all born explorers. Everybody's born an explorer. Um, and when you look at your kids, so my kids, when they're one year old, they wanted to walk out of the house and uh, into nature, and they start to wonder what's between themselves and the horizon. And then also all kids almost would like to have more space around themselves. So 
we all have this spirit of exploration in us. Of course, it's diluted uh, through kindergarten, schools, uh, family, friends, but the spirit never goes away. So we all have this spirit of exploration in us. And uh, in my case, I, I, I really hope uh, new challenges come up and a little beautiful extra thing with having new challenges is that, or having varieties in life, is that life feels long. When you are as old as I am, people kind of start to complain that life is short. That's because you're doing the same things every day. If you spend some time in nature, uh, uh, you get variety in your life and suddenly life starts to feel long and life is long um, if you don't uh, waste your time. And that's another reason I, I wrote this book. Pues muy bien, Arling. Muchas gracias por eh, habernos acompañado en, con este, estos días tan filosóficos que estamos Muchas teniendo. Muchas gracias. Ha sido un placer estar contigo y recomendaros a todos pues, que leáis esta filosofía para exploradores polares, que por cierto, te quiero decir, yo también tengo un hijo adolescente, 17 años, y he pensado que es el tipo de libro perfecto para que un chaval, o sobre todo alguien, es un libro para todo el mundo, para todas las edades, pero creo que para alguien joven puede ser muy estimulante, le puede dar una idea muy sensata de cómo ser un aventurero sin perder la cabeza. <laughs> Un placer, Arlene. Thank you, Gabi. Muchas gracias, Gabi. Super. Chao. Hasta luego. Chao. 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 Chao.